Good morning, how are we doing today? This is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit, and today we're gonna to complete the review and exploration of my push fold quiz. If you didn't already see part one, please pause this video and click the link in the description box to go there now. If you've already watched that video, you're in the right place, but please make sure to watch part one first. Just like part one, Ben Hales is here to take you through the answers and process for the final five questions. So enough rambling from me, I'll leave you in Ben Hales' capable hands, enjoy. Welcome back. You're listening to Ben Hales, and I'm going to press on with the second half of this video exploring the effects of ICM on our shoving ranges. We're up to question six from Split Suit's quiz, and you can see on the left hand side, ace two from the cutoff at 15 big blinds. What is our shoving range in this spot? If you look across at snap shove, you'll see the chip EV solution to this problem. So shoving ace two at 15 big blinds from the cutoff, it, it recommends a 23.7% range. And if we compare that with the ICM solution, so taking into consideration the stack sizes of our opponents and the tournament situation, HRC comes up with a 16.9% range. So again, we've got this slightly tighter range and we want to be thinking about why we're shoving a tighter range in this spot so to help us we have we have my document over here on the right so how much pressure are we under in this spot well i think fairly clearly with four players remaining similar stack depths we're under a huge amount of pressure 15 big blinds is a sizable amount if we were at six big blinds, then the value of the chips we stood to win because of the blinds and antes would be more than it is um, at 15 big blinds. And those 15 big blinds are worth a lot more, the ones that we've got in our stack, than the ones that we stand to win. And for that reason, we have to go with a narrower range for shoving. And that looks like 16.9%. So I think in this spot, if you are shoving ace two offsuit, you're probably shoving a little bit wide. You'll notice that none of the hands for shoving are particularly negative EV. So just as a side point, if you're in this spot with any two cards and your opponents are all folding way too often, then you might be able to shove considerably wider than the 16.9% that HRC recommends. Good, let's move on to question seven. In this one, we're holding queen jack of hearts with 12 big blinds from the cutoff. Looks like a pretty simple shove, right? And this was definitely one of the more straightforward answers in the quiz where you can see queen jack suited sitting comfortably in snap shoves range for pushing. So the 95% of you who answered shove, um, I think you're correct on this one. But interestingly, when we go to the ICM solution, so for those of you who did answer fold, the Queen Jack suited is only very marginally plus EV when we factor in ICM. This question so far has the most dramatic reduction in our shoving range. Nearly 30% for chip EV from snap shove, and now only 11.9% from HRC. So there must be some fairly intense ICM pressure at work. Let's now turn our attention to that. So what kind of pressure are we under here? 12 big blinds. There's six players remaining. The pay jumps are getting big. Um, all the stack sizes are relatively similar. We're definitely under a high amount of pressure. If we consider how much pressure we can exert on our opponents, then yeah, we can exert quite a bit of pressure on certainly the small blind. The button has us quite nicely covered and can probably call off with a wider range than the other two. Um, so the pressure we're exerting on them is, well, it's, it's considerable, I would say at least medium, but it's not as great as the pressure on us. So looking across at the table, we're in that red category over on the right hand side, um, probably high pressure for us, medium pressure for our opponents. And 
for that reason, we are having to shove much narrower. And that's the reason for the dramatic reduction in the number of hands we can profitably shove. Now, even ace 10 off from the cutoff would be a fold according to HRC. Interesting stuff. Let's now move on and look at question number eight. With seven players remaining, we're dealt ace nine of hearts under the gun. And the question asks us, are we to shove or to fold? And most of the time at less than 10 big blinds, if we're dealt a pocket pair or a suited ace, then it's usually going to be a shove from anywhere on the table. And in this case, it's no different. So you are correct, of course, to choose shove. 20% is what snap shove offers us as the chip EV solution here. If we compare that with HRC, we can see there is a reduction. Ace nine suited is still a clear push. And in fact, all the suited aces are given as shoves. Um, Ace six suited, very, very marginal indeed. But you can see we have a 14% range. So there's this usual reduction. We're starting to see a pattern where a lot of these examples, there's similar amounts of pressure with the Apple SEM. And we're seeing commonly around a 33% reduction in the number of hands we can profitably shove. In this specific example, let's consider the pressure. We have nine big blinds. Um, it, it, I, I always think we're under slightly less pressure when we are the smallest stack. We've got less to lose than everybody else. The, the big stacks and the small stacks are often under a little bit less pressure than the medium stacks who stand to lose more equity in the prize money if they are putting their entire stacks at risk. It's, of course, final table. Stack size is very close together. Um, the, the pressure is still, it's still quite high. What pressure are we able to exert on others? Well, varying degrees, I think there's certainly low to medium pressure being applied on um, everybody. And so if you look across at the table, something probably in that orange category, so we're having to shove narrower than we would under no ICM pressure. That takes us through to question number nine. You may notice a small mistake on this one on the uh, HRC. It's labeled as hand 10. And that's just because idiot here made a small mistake. And I don't know how to change it now. But uh, hand 10 is hand 9 and hand 11 is hand 10. For any of you feeling confused by that, um, not to worry. Ace 8 from mid position. We're on the low jack. And... We have 14 big blinds, quite a large stack size to be shoving through five active opponents, especially when they've all got us covered in chips. Snap shove gives us a range of 19.2%, whereas HRC likes a 7.4% range. So possibly the most dramatic reduction in hands we've seen yet. Even all those suited aces in HRC are only very, very marginally liked as shoves. Pocket pairs, pocket nines is seen as negative. How many of you would not commit to pocket nines in this spot? It's a tricky one, isn't it? But there is huge amounts of ICM pressure. This just comes down to stack sizes. They're all roughly the same on this table. And you can't, just can't go risking 14 big blinds through five opponents under this type of ICM pressure. Remember, we're further back on the table on the low jack. So that needs to be taken into consideration. We learned that in the first part of this video. We learned that the further back on the table we are, the more we have to just think about the pressure on us. So question one over here is more of a factor than question two and the pressure we're under is undoubtedly high in this spot yeah the pressure we're exerting on others is also high but overall we're having to shove much much narrower because we've got five active opponents behind us we simply have to be much tighter 
So we're through to the final question where we're holding 7-8 offsuit in the small blind, shoving into the big blind who has 11 big blinds. And 73% of you said this was a shove. If we look across at snap shove for the chip EV solution, you'll see that 7-8 offsuit is comfortably within the 72% of hands that it wants us to shove here. Now, whenever we're shoving into just one opponent, it is going to be very opponent specific, our actions. Um, it's going to be dominated largely by whether we think our opponent folds too much or calls too much. But if our opponent is calling perfectly, then we can see that we should be shoving 71.9% of hands. If we now factor in ICM, you'll actually see there's a huge mistake and what's being displayed is the uh, under the guns shoving range. What we want is the small blinds shoving range. And I can tell you that the correct solution here is almost identical to the chip EV solution from Snapshot. So there's no real impact from ICM, or perhaps that's the wrong way to express it. The way that I would look at it is if we think about the ICM pressure here, we're able to exert quite a lot of pressure on the big blind, but we're under a similar amount of pressure and the two are kind of candling each other out. Um, so in this spot, we're able to shove 72.9% of hands, which was pretty much exactly the same range as offered by snap shove. So I don't know about you, but I feel over the course of just 10 example hands here and thinking about the ICM pressure. I've learned a ton about how this works and how ICM pressure affects our shoving ranges. Not only have we got these two questions that we can ask ourselves to help guide us, but I've also got a couple of additional observations that I'd like to finish on. First up, we have to be more cautious in earlier position. This is a theme that we've seen throughout. And so our decision in earlier position is much, much more about, about the pressure on us. Whereas in later position, the decision's a lot more about the pressure on our opponents when we shove. The second point is a very, very obvious one that I've not really talked too much about because it is so obvious. But at smaller stack depths, we're often able to be looser in our approach. And at larger stack depths, we're going to need to be more cautious. And there are clear, obvious mathematical reasons for that. I hope you found this exercise useful and I hope I've inspired you to go away and do some exploration of your own. My name's Ben Hales. Thanks very much for listening. So that's going to wrap it up for this series. Thanks again to Ben Hales, and of course, thank you for watching. If you're interested in doing more of this kind of exploration, I 100% suggest you check out the Final Tables workbook. Ben co-wrote this workbook with me, and together we guide you through rigorous range exercises that prepare you for making better decisions at every final table you make. This includes push fold spots pre-flop, sea bedding with air, finding barrels, and understanding ICM pressure through key explorations. Just visit splitsuit.com slash final and grab the edition that's right for you. If you really enjoy Ben's approach, the Titan edition comes with loads of Ben's answers and process to help you double check your progression. And remember to use the code YouTube to save $10 on your purchase. Again, thank you so much for watching and please make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Remember, I don't just ask for subscribers to bulk up a random number. Rather, I'm most active when a video immediately launches and then I trail off after that. So when you subscribe and get notified, you'll see the new video when it first launches and I'll be more likely to answer your follow-up questions in the comments. So thank you once more for hanging out today and I really hope you enjoyed. If you need anything at all, please don't hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, good luck out there and happy grinding.